So this is the F-Pace with a technology package, which gives us the 10 inch touchscreen, which uses a quad core Intel processor. And our engineers tell us it's the fastest processor in any vehicle today. And it also gives you the 12 inch virtual instruments behind the steering wheel. So a couple of fun things that it can do. Of course, the gauges turn red when you put it in dynamic mode, like most Jaguars. But it also has a couple of other neat features. You can see right now I have the flashlight effect on, which means there's a highlight around the needle on the speedometer and the tachometer. So you know the fun stuff that it can do. If I go into uh, using the, the keypad on the steering wheel, I can do things like call up my recent calls so I can access my phone book right from the, the instrument panel. But even more fun, if I go into display settings, I can actually change the theme or I can go to a full screen map view, which is really nice. So that way I can do one thing on the touch screen, but still have my map view on the infotainment system. Nice. On the touch screen, it's a 10 inch diagonal touch screen, very fast system, just like your, uh, your iPhone or your tablet. Um, you just swipe to move through. You don't actually have to use the arrows. I'll open up the nav system here. Right now it's saying, hello, Alvin. Uh, Alvin's one of the guys that works for me. We were signed in with his here navigation account. What that allows you to do is use the companion app on your phone. So you can set a destination on your phone, have your phone guide you to the car, have the car take you as close as possible to destination, and then hand the navigation back to your phone to guide you the rest of the way. So it's true door to door. I mentioned we had uh, that quad core processor. It means it's a very fast screen. So you can see I can pinch and zoom, I can swipe, incredibly fast response times. We're connected to the internet, so I can do things like satellite view as well, so we can see where we are. And we're also getting real time traffic information, so you can see Highway 82 is green here. So just going back to the 3D view, because that's my favorite. Some other neat stuff that we can do here. Um, so it, list of kind of inf information that's useful and nearby. So if I look at the gas stations that are close by, as I scroll through the list, you're actually gonna see that the map actually moves to focus in on the, the ones I'm looking at on the list. And with just one easy touch, I can start navigation to that destination. Some other cool stuff that it does, um, one of the features is called turn on my commute. So it actually will pay attention to your commute. And after a couple of days, it will learn your commute. And then using the real time traffic information, it can warn you if you need to take a different way home or to work based on traffic and construction. You can enter destinations by typing an address in, of course, but you would also have a, a live search function. Um, so if you're offline, the car will search hundreds of thousands of points of interest that are stored in the, uh, in the vehicle. Uh, but if you're online, you can actually do uh, an online search. So we're having some trouble with uh, the internet here because we're in the middle of nowhere. But I can type in Viceroy, which is the hotel that we're staying at. Um, it's gonna search for what's relevant um, and then pop it up. If I was online, it would actually give me TripAdvisor reviews and more information. So you can look up restaurants, hotels, and see what the best thing to do is along your route. So uh, there's lots more features in the navigation system, but we're gonna go back to the home screen, just kind of show you some of the other features on here. I'm gonna go into the audio system for a moment. Turn the audio down just so we don't overwhelm your phone here. What you notice, first of all, when we go into the audio system is that we've now separated the screen. So two thirds of the screen is devoted to the audio system. And then one third of the screen is devoted to uh, this tile that you can actually scroll through. So right now we have our navigation. I could have it on my phone, uh, music, news, weather. Um, so that way you can do multiple things over here on the touch screen while still having that relevant, important information for you. So right now we're listening off to music off of my iPhone. You can see we're getting the album art here, some neat features like the up next features. You can actually see what's coming up. So, you know, we're in the Rocky Mountains, so we probably should be playing John Denver, right? Uh, but then you can also go into, uh, of course, things like Sirius XM radio. We have some neat features here. You can see my favorites are actually along in a carousel along the bottom. So it's really easy to scroll through my favorites on Sirius with the icons. And then favoriting a station is real simple. Just touch the star. Um, when it's filled in, it's a favorite. When it's empty, it's not. Um, I can do things like look at the complete list of Sirius XM stations, and as I scroll through the list, I can actually favorite stuff in the list. So if I know what my favorites are, it makes it real easy to program your favorites in. Also, if you look at just regular AM, FM radio, in my favorites in AM, FM, I can actually combine AM and FM stations into one favorites list, so I can scroll through AM and FM stations just at one go, so I don't have to change the band. Um, so I can have my favorites in there, so as you can see, I have some AM and some FM stations. Uh, but it's also really easy to find a station. So if I go in, I can see what all the stations are in the local area as a list. I can punch it in um, directly, or it can actually show me what genres are in the area. Since we're in the middle of nowhere, we only have a choice between public and rock. So some other neat things that this uh, vehicle can do. 
eco data. So if you're interested in how you're driving and how you're performing, um, we have some neat stuff like the live feature, which provides us weather and news. Um, so we're gonna see if the weather is gonna work here with our with our sketchy uh, signal here. I'm gonna update. One of the great things about this weather app is that if you have a destination program into your navigation system, you can actually find out the weather at your destination. So you can see what the weather is going to be along your route as well. There's also news. Um, so I can go into CNN or Reuters uh, and I can actually see what the top headlines are and I can actually have the system read the headlines and the articles aloud to me so in a text to speech function. So just with a quick press. So if I have the audio playing, it'll just it'll read the, the news and then as soon as I finish with the news, the audio will come back on. Some other neat stuff that you can do here, um, we have InControl Apps, which is our native kind of Apple CarPlay Android Auto-like system. It's been on out for about two years now. We have about 20 different apps that are on it, and so these apps are actually on my phone, so I'm accessing through, my, through the touchscreen the apps that are on my phone. Also over here, we have a web browser, so if you're connected to the internet, you can do some light web browsing, and then you have some vehicle information here. So when you're going off-road later, you can actually look at the all-surface information and see what the wheels are doing, what angle they're pointed, and also the power distribution uh, front to rear. Of course, the car is mostly rear-wheel drive all the time, unless it senses slip, and then it'll send some power to the front. So very handy for, uh, for off-roading when trying to navigate. And the last thing I'm gonna show you uh, is just, if this is your vehicle and you, you know, this is a great home screen, but let's say you want to customize it, you can actually go here to the left. And if you do a long press here, you're going to get a grid where you can actually create your own home screen. So if I select one of these, it's going to be a choice of navigation, telephone, audio, or other systems. And so if I want to add a clock to my own personal home screen, I can put it there, I can move it around. Um, and then when I'm done, I have created my own personal home screen, which I can fill up any way I want and I can actually have the vehicle set this to be the default home screen. So every time I turn the car on or go hit the home button, it goes back to my own personal home screen. Um, and you can create up to, uh, up to three of these um, and you can pick which ones you want um, and then set it for your own settings. So if you wanna have uh, direct access to Wi-Fi hotspot or Sirius satellite radio, you can put all that stuff on your own personal home screen. So you see this, uh, the row of buttons on the bottom here stays um, no matter what function you're in, so you always have direct access to the main functions. But then we've also pulled a lot of the really often used functions, and especially the HVAC controls, and we've given them hard keys down here. So the stuff that you want to just have a real quick access to, like temperature and fan speed, volume control, we've pulled that out of the touchscreen, so it's much easier to use. So trying to find that right balance between what should go in the touchscreen and what should have a hard button. And that's the Jaguar in-control touch pro infotainment system.